This is the Music History Today podcast for September 25th. On today's show, John Bonham passes away, U2 forms a musical hits Broadway, and a musical television show premieres. First up, though, on this date in 1934, Henry Busey recorded the song Hot Lips. In 1954, Elvis Presley performed on the Grand Ole Opry. The Opry fans and personnel reacted badly with one Opry person telling Elvis that he should go back to driving trucks. In 1961, Bob Dylan received his first positive national media concert review after he played a concert in New York City, jump-starting his career. In 1964, The Temptations recorded their song, My Girl. On that same day, someone offered Beatles manager Brian Epstein three and a half million British pounds for the group's managerial contract. Brian said no, blissfully. In 1965, speaking of the Beatles, the Beatles cartoon show premiered on television in America. In 1967, the Beatles started recording their song, The Fool on the Hill. On that same day, Dolly Parton performed on the Porter Wagner show for the first time, starting a seven-year partnership with the show. In 1968, the University of Miami banned the song Dixie from being played at events on campus. In 1969, John Lennon recorded his song, Cold Turkey. In 1970, Janis Joplin recorded her song, Me and Bobby McGee, and the Partridge Family television show premiered. In 1976, the band U2 was formed. In 1981, the Rolling Stones started their American tour. In 1990, Dave Grohl joined Nirvana. In 2001, XM Satellite Radio debuted. Also on that same day, the Recording Academy of America changed its rules to allow downloadable songs to be considered for their Grammy Awards. Also on that exact same day, 2001, rapper Eric Sermon was seriously injured in an auto accident. In 2008, the band Don Broco formed. On that same day, singer and actor Chen Kun's movie Painted Skin premiered. And MySpace started MySpace Music. Remember that? Well, that was a time. In 2012, two men were found guilty of attempting to blackmail Stevie Wonder. In 2017, Tom Petty performed for the final time. And in 2019, the first episode of the Ken Burns documentary Country Music premiered on television. In 2021, composer Louis Felber married actress and TV film producer Lena Dunham, and the annual Farm Aid charity concert took place on that day. In classical music, in 1886, the opera Dorothy premiered. In 1907, Jean Sibelius premiered his Third Symphony, and in 1966, Dmitry Shostakovich premiered his Second Cello Concert. In theater, in 1965, the musical Do I Hear a Waltz closed on Broadway. In 1976, the revival of the musical Porgy and Bess closed on Broadway. In 1979, the musical La Vida debuted on Broadway. In 1984, the musical Stepping Out opened in London, England. And in 1992, Barry Manilow premiered his show, Showstoppers, on Broadway. In award ceremonies that were held on September 25th, in 1947, the Cannes Film Festival gave Ziegfeld Follies Best Musical and Walt Disney's Dumbo Best Animation. That was back when they used to have a ton of awards. In 1990, Little Richard had a street named after him in Macon, Georgia. And in 1993, the United States Postal Service put Patsy Cline on a stamp. Albums that were released on September 25th include in 1965 when the Ventures released the Ventures A Go-Go. In 1967, The Doors released Strange Days. In 1969, Gladys Knight and the Pips released Nitty Gritty. In 1970, Ringo Starr released Boku of Blues. In 1972, Black Sabbath released Black Sabbath Volume 4. In 1974, the Jay Giles Band released Nightmares and Other Tales from the Vinyl Jungle. In 1976, Black Sabbath released Technical Ecstasy. In 1978, The Village People released Cruisin' and The Beach Boys released M.I.U. Album. In 1979, The Gang of Four released Entertainment, Barry Manilow released One Voice, and The Buzzcocks released Singles Going Steady. 
1981, The Creatures released Wild Things. In 1982, The Psychedelic Furs released Forever Now. In 1988, They Might Be Giants released Lincoln. In 1989, Tears for Fears released Seeds of Love. And The Sugar Cubes released Here Today, Tomorrow, Next Week. In 1990, NXS released X, or 10, depending on how you're looking at it. Also in 1990, The Replacements released All Shook Down, Carly Simon released Have You Seen Me Lately, Simple Minds released Themes Volume 2, August 82 to April 85, The Grateful Dead released Without a Net, and The Vaughn Brothers released Family Style. In 1992, John Cale released Fragments of a Rainy Season. In 1994, Melt Banana released Speak Squeak Creek. In 1995, Harem Scarum released Voice of Reason and David Bowie released One Outside. In 2000, Kylie Minogue released Light Years. David Bowie released Bowie at the Beep. Van Morrison and Linda Gale Lewis released You Win Again, and Yes released House of Yes live from the House of Blues. In 2001, The Knack released Normal as the Next Guy. The Innocence Mission released Small Planes. Ryan Adams released Gold, and 38 Special released A Wild-Eyed Christmas Night. In 2006, Focus released Focus 9 and New Skin. In 2007, Herbie Hancock released his Grammy Award-winning album, River, The Joni Letters. Also on that same day, Bruce Springsteen released Magic, Melissa Etheridge released The Awakening, The Foo Fighters released Echoes, Silence, Patience, and Grace, Debbie Harry released A Necessary Evil, Steve Earle released Washington Square Serenade, and Joni Mitchell, speaking of, released Shine. In 2012, No Doubt released Push and Shove. In 2015, David Bowie released Five Years, 1969 to 1973. Don Henley released Cass County. And Fetty Wap released his debut album, Up Next. Singles that were released in the UK on September 25th include in 1981. When Dire Straits released Tunnel of Love. And Dara Hall and John Oates released Private Eyes. Meanwhile, in America, in 1965, Fontella Bass released Rescue Me and the Rolling Stones released Get Off My Cloud. In 1972, Roberta Flack and Donny Hathaway released You've Lost That Love and Feelin'. In 1979, The Cars released It's All I Can Do. In 1981, Diana Ross released Why Do Fools Fall in Love. In 1989, Belinda Carlisle released Leave a Light On. In 2012, Kesha released Die Young and Taylor Swift released Begin Again. And in 2020, Van Morrison released an anti-COVID-19 lockdown song called Born to be Free. Before we go any further, we'd like to tell you that there is now a Music History In-Depth podcast where we go more in-depth on a few of the events that happen in music history for that particular week. The Music History In-Depth podcast runs every Tuesday on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast from, as does our Music Halls of Fame podcast, which talks about a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame along with other Music Halls of Fame, museums, and walks of fame. The Music Halls of Fame podcast drops every Thursday and can also be found on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, back to this podcast. Artists who were born on September 25th include entertainer Will Smith, entertainer Donald Glover, a.k.a. Childish Gambino, singer Rosalia, composer Dmitry Shostakovich, singer Sofia Reyes, Singer Lil J, singer Ryan Beatty, singer-songwriter Zucchero, Diana Ortiz of Dream, rapper T.I., blues musician Booba Barnes, Eric Darling of The Weavers, Daniel Kessler of Interpol, Dean Ween of the group Ween, Stephen Severin of Susie and the Banshees, Burley Drummond of Ambrosia, John Fiddler of British Lions, John Locke of Spirit, pianist Glenn Gould, composer Jean-Philippe Rameau, country music singer Joe Sun, Brian McLean of Love, Jerry Penrod of Iron Butterfly, singer Cecile Womack, singer Kathy McDonald, Gary Alexander of The Association, Ani McIntyre of The Average White Band, Ian Tyson of Ian and Sylvia, singer Dee Dee Warwick, Steve Mackey of The Stooges, and Ron Bumblefoot Thal of Guns N' Roses. 
Artists who unfortunately passed away on September 25th include composer Francesco de Langa, who passed away in 1619 at the age of 85. Composer Johann Pez passed away in 1716 at the age of 52. Composer George Motz passed away in 1733 at the age of 79. Composer Braz de Lima passed away in 1813 at the age of 61. Composer Johann Strauss passed away in 1849 at the age of 45. Composer Carl Zollner passed away in 1860 at the age of 60. Composer Julius Fusick passed away in 1916 at the age of 44. Composer William F. Suds passed away in 1920 at the age of 77. Composer Leo Kaufman passed away in 1944 at the age of 43. Composer Ennio Porino passed away in 1959 at the age of 49. The conductor of the Seattle Symphony, Nikolai Sokolov, passed away in 1965 at the age of 79. Jazz violinist Stuff Smith passed away in 1967 at the age of 58. Composer Efim Golishev passed away in 1970 at the age of 73. Singer and actor Tapio Ratavara passed away from a cerebral hemorrhage in 1979 at the age of 64. Legendary drummer John Bonham of the group Led Zeppelin passed away after drinking heavily in 1980 at the age of 32. Composer Albert Moshinger passed away in 1985 at the age of 88. Composer Russell Smith passed away in 1998 at the age of 71. Violinist Wanda Luzado passed away in 2002 at the age of 83. Jazz pianist George Arvanitas passed away in 2005 at the age of 74. Flute player Keys Otten passed away in 2008 at the age of 83. Pianist Alicia De La Rocha passed away in 2009 at the age of 86. Singer Andy Williams passed away from cancer in 2012 at the age of 84. Country music singer-songwriter Gene Shepard passed away in 2016 at the age of 82. Singer Kashif passed away in 2016 at the age of 59. We're going to give this next guy his due because he does not get talked about enough. Songwriter and musician Rod Temperton, who was in the group Heat Wave, passed away from cancer in 2016 at the age of 66. You may not know his name, but you absolutely know his songs. He was one of the biggest songwriters back in the 1970s and such. He wrote, for instance, Thriller and Rock With You for Michael Jackson. He also wrote Give Me the Night by George Benson. He also wrote the James Ingram and Michael McDonald duet, Yamo Be There. And as part of Heat Wave, he wrote Boogie Nights and Always and Forever. So there's a few songs for you. Man never got his due while alive. Pianist Paul Badura Skoda passed away in 2019 at the age of 91, and singer S.P. Balasubramanyan passed away from COVID-19 in 2020 at the age of 74. Next on the Music History Today podcast, it is September 26, when in 1937, the Empress of the Blues, Miss Bessie Smith, passed away.